Good morning, everybody. My objective today is to talk to you about handed engines, paired engines, and in general, the rotation of engines and, and gardeners in particular. I would say over 90% or maybe 99% or 95% of engines out there rotate anti-clockwise when looked at from the flywheel end. This is really important to grasp this. That's the convention that's been adopted over the past few hundred years, that engines rotate anti-clockwise when looked at from the flywheel. Now, um, this subject is of no interest at all to hauliers and people who are in the automotive industry. It's only of interest to marine uh, engineers. So you can bail out at this point if you're not interested in boats. Now, the reason why it's of interest in boats is that quite often in boats, we've got two propellers, not just one. And the reason for this is really quite simple. Um, any propeller, by virtue of the way that it works, by virtue of the way that it ro ro rotates, causes the boat to skew. If you take your hand off the tiller, or off the wheel, the boat will naturally skew in some direction if there's only one propeller. Now, this makes the steering um, that little bit more difficult. So if we can employ two propellers, we've got one propeller which is inclined to skew the, the boat to the, to the port side, and the other propeller which is inclined to sco skew the boat to the starboard side. So that helps with the steering. So, Way back in the very early days of marine engines, the drive was straight through. There was no, uh, there was no gearbox. <clears throat> so, or certainly there was, no, there was no reverse in the gearbox. They couldn't rotate the direction within the gearbox. So they had to rotate the whole engine. Now, how this was achieved um, in the old single cylinder Bollinger engine, for example, uh, they actually stopped the engine. Um, the Bollinger was originally started by hand, and you swung the engine to start it. So to get it to go in the opposite direction, they simply stopped the engine, had a dead stop, and then give the flywheel a push in the other direction, and the whole engine would rotate the other way. It was really quite cumbersome, and it couldn't be done in a hurry. Not like marine, modern marine engines, just by simply uh, uh, operating a toggle, you can reverse direction, no problem. These are obviously not gardeners. These are two large and rather old man engines belonging to a customer of ours in Italy. I think they were manufactured in 1932. Now, these engines can be rotated again by stopping them and causing them to rotate in the, in the other direction. Notice that the engines are completely symmetrical. Notice that the exhaust uh, manifolds are on the outside. The injector pumps behind me standing there are down the center. Now, this is a big advantage of handed engines because the engineer didn't have to walk all the way around the engine uh, to get at the critical parts. The critical parts, as far as a, a maintenance engineer is concerned, of course, is the injector pump. The exhaust side and the inlet manifold is rather uh, boring in comparison. The action is really on the injector pump side. So this saved done labor the um, technician looking after the engines only had to walk up and down the centre and everything was to hand. Now this is an 8L3 and this engine would normally lie on the port side of the boat. You'll notice that the injector pump is actually on the wrong inverted commas side of the engine. Um, so this is obviously a left handed engine here. The flywheel on this engine will rotate clockwise. I know that terminology is a bit confusing, um, but to reiterate and repeat myself, on a conventional engine, the flywheel rotates anti-clockwise, but the engine is referred to as right-handed. I know that's confusing, but there's nothing I can do about it. Now, this is the right-handed conventional rotation engine, which is a matching makes up the matching pair here. So you can imagine if the two engines were lying side by side in an engine room, 
the injector pump, in other words, the, the action side of the engine, the interesting side of the engine, would be close to hand uh, for the engineer walking up and down between. C2 uh, 6LXB gen sets, and they're both conventional rotation. Gen sets were never asked to run backwards, so there was no need to, be, to provide for a reverse. That's uh, These are on a tug on a cluster of ours in, um, in Holland. So here we've got a flywheel from a conventional uh, right-handed engine. This mark here is number one top dead center. And here we've got two marks for the injection. Injection will play, will take place if the engine was set up for 24 degrees here and for 30 degrees here. You don't often get that marked like this, but on this, that's the case in this particular engine. So this flywheel is rotating this way. I hope you understand that. So if you can imagine some fixed point here, these lines here will meet that fixed point first. They'll meet it before uh, top dead center meets it. That's in a conventional um, right-handed engine where the flywheel is rotating anti-clockwise. So if you meet an engine where the injection marks are on the other side of top dead center, you know you're dealing with a left-handed engine. Now, the flywheel will still work. It'll work fine. It's just that you've got to take uh, that into account that the timing marks are, are on the other side of top dead center. I hope that's clear. So just by the way, a book of great interest um, on propellers and engine rotati rotation and torque and power and so on is this propeller handbag, handbook by Dave Gere. Um, you get it in any, you get it on Amazon certainly or any good bookshop. It's really a most excellent book. I can't recommend it highly enough. So that's all I have for you. Um, my some future video, I intend to look at how a conventional engine can actually be um, encouraged or forced to reverse itself, which is not a very pleasant experience, but it does happen. That's something for the future. Thank you, Nan.